Hi, and welcome to our follow-up video for Calculus 1, where we will be evaluating some limits of a function. So in looking at our notes, although this is not a textbook definition of a limit, this sort of will describe for you what a limit um, will represent. So we say as a graph, for example in this case, gets closer and closer to a particular value, but it may not actually equal that number it will be approaching that value. Now sometimes it may equal, that will depend on our continuity and things like that, which we'll talk about throughout the course. Um, so let's take a look at this graphically. So number one says find the limits given the graph of f of x. So here's our graph of our function. This is a piecewise function. And I'm going to start with question number b here, or question b, which says limit that's what LIM stands for, right? Limit. And this part is as x approaches 1. And so if I look as if x equals 1 had a vertical line here, what I want to do is I want to approach 1 from numbers that are less than 1, so coming in from this left-hand side of x equals 1, as well as I want to come in from the right-hand side of x approaching 1. So if I look, this is actually a movement of looking. So I don't just want to look at one moment in time. This one point right here may be the function's value at 1, which in pre-calculus we always knew we could write as f of 1 equals 1. That is my function's value at 1. And in order to truly be a function, if that was a closed point at 1, 1, then this point up here at 1, comma, I will call that 3.8 maybe or 3.7, that whole right, has to be a hole and cannot be a closed point because then our vertical line test would fail and this graph would not be the graph of a function. So as I look through this here, I'm looking as x approaches 1 both from the left side, so coming in this way, and from the right hand side, so coming in that way. So I'm looking in a direction here. And as I approach from the left, I'm approaching that y value of 3.8. And as I approach from the right, getting closer and closer to x approaching 1, the function value is also approaching 3.8. So I could say the limit as x approaches 1 of the function is 3.8. I also don't have to identify that, whether it was a hole or a point, because again, a limit is a, a function value that you are approaching. You may or may not equal that number. So to further make sure that we don't um, ever put down this point right here, I'm actually going to name it here. This is actually just a distractor point for limits. I should not be putting down any limit that has 1 as an answer as x approaches 1 or really any other number because this is just a point that is defined at one moment in time. My limit is going to be along a curve. All right, so I'm going to write that here, along a curve. Okay? So now, if I look, my other limits um, all have to do with 2. So A, C, and D all have to do with as x approaches 2. And you'll notice it doesn't say x equals 2. It says x approaches 2, for example. But E is different. So let's look down here at E. So that one suggests limit of my function, because you have to be taking limit of something, as x approaches 3. So now if I take a look at x equals 3, here's my x equals 3, right, because this is my x-axis and my y-axis, those did get cut off. And at x equals 3, if I come in from the left, here's where I'm coming in 
from the left. So you would think of a value like 2.999 might be my left sided limit. And then as I approach x equals 3 or x is approaching 3 from the right, it might be something just a little bit bigger than 3 or 3.001 for example. And both of those y values are approaching that point which is at 3 comma 0, so my limit would be 0. So now let's talk about that x approaching 2 point. Now, and I'm going to get rid of a few other things here just for cleanliness. Oops. Okay, and as I look here as x approaches 2, because all these three have something to do with x approaching 2, so I'm going to take a look at what this would look like here. So x approaching 2, if you'll notice, as I approach 2 from the right hand side, now the right side as x approaches 2 is going to be a number just a little bit bigger than 2. So maybe something like 2.001. Well because this is a piecewise curve, or maybe um, pieces of functions that are, are pieced together, we'll show you what a piecewise looks like algebraically here in a little bit, I might be looking at a different curve than when I look at the left side as x approaching 2. The left side of x approaching 2 would look like a little bit less than 2, which might be something like 1.999. So if I'm coming in from the right and I'm trying to approach that vertical line at x equals 2 here, I'm coming in from the right, I'm coming in down here. And as I approach x equals 2 from the left hand side or something a little bit less than x equaling 2, like 1.999, I'm up there on that curve. And again, this looks like it might be the point 2 comma, we'll call it the same, maybe it's 3.8 or maybe you called it 3.7, that would be fine too. And I'm going to call this whole 2 comma, negative 1, because that appears to be negative 1. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do is write this out in words so you understand what this means. So this is actually asking for the limit of the function as x approaches, and yes, there is a plus after the 2. Any guesses on what that plus does after the 2? Well, it probably means we're either coming in from the right or from the left. It probably tells me what direction to come in on. Any guesses which one the plus would be? And if you said the right, you were correct. So two from the right. Because again, the right would be a little bit larger than that value. So two plus means two from the right. And that means I'm down here on that line, so negative 1. And again, you don't need to say whether it was a whole or an actual included value on your function because a limit is just approaching this number. So now 2 from the left, well as x is approaching 2 from the left, that puts me up here approaching 3.8. And so now what I have is as x approaches 2 from the right, my limit is negative 1. And as x approaches 2 from the left, that limit would be 3.8. So what would my limit be if I just said limit as x approaches 2? And what if I didn't put a side to it? Well, the first couple that we did, we talked about, for example, as x approaches 1, coming in from both sides. And so I need to think about that same principle or same thought here. I need to come in from both sides. So if I come in from the right, or the 2 plus as it looks like, and I get negative 1, and I come in from the left, and I get a y value of 3.8, and those aren't the same, my limits are not the same, therefore I would say DNE, 
does not exist. What's also important to note is that we're going to have to state a reason why. And in this case, I would write it out in limit notation. My limit notation is already here for me to reference as well. I would say the limit of my function as x approaches 2 from the left does not equal the limit of my function as x approaches 2 from the right. The one thing I would not want to say is negative 1 does not equal 3.8 because again that doesn't necessarily say what you mean. Although that's true, negative 1 does not equal 3.8, what do you actually mean by that? Well the negative 1 was the limit as x approaches 2 from the right and the 3.8 was the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of my function. So that's actually what you're saying is that it does not exist because those one-sided limits, so here's one side, here's one side, right from the left, from the right, so my one-sided limits are not equivalent. Now even if your homework or classwork or whatever does not ask you to identify the reason why something does not exist, most of your quizzes and tests might ask you something like that and you will probably have to write it out. So please be prepared to answer those types of questions as you go through all of the DNEs. Why does the limit not exist? Okay, let's move on. Okay, we're going to look at this second one here, which will be um, another graph, but it's going to be going backwards. We're going to give you the limits and ask you to draw a graph of just an example of what this function might look like. Because again, if I ask you to draw the graph, you might draw something curved, I might draw something straight, but as long as it is a function, right, then we're going to still satisfy these limits and be fine. So the one thing I'm going to start with is the pre-calculus ideas here. These are function values. f of 1 equals 1 means that if I look over here at my Cartesian plane and I identify my axes, they're on there. They're just part of the axes. So I don't know if you could see that. The x was right there and the y was overlapping with the line. But um, I'm going to go ahead and plot these points so I can keep them on here f of 1 equals 1 means if x is 1, y is 1, so here's a point 1 comma 1. That does not necessarily have to be a long, a curve, that just has to be one moment in time, that function's value. So I would do the same thing for f of 4 equals negative 1. If x equals 4, my y value is negative 1, and again, that is just a point. It does not necessarily have to connect to any other part of my curve. Now, if I have another x value at 1, I'm going to have to make sure that I put a hole there just so I don't overlap anything because I want to keep this a function. So I'm going to start with um, this limit as x approaches 1 of my function should be 3. Well, if x is approaching 1, this has to be two-sided because it does not identify which one side it is coming from. So I need to assume both. So I'm going to say 1 is my input, right, for x. 3 would be my output. So at 1, 3, and oops, I've got to be careful. I want to make sure I put a hole here and not a closed point because, again, um, it cannot equal. And maybe that's not a good... Um, whole, but get close enough, right, 1, 3. Now I need to have a curve that will approach 1, 3. So from the left, so it looks something like so, and from the right, looks something like so. I just start it because then I know I can connect it with whatever I need to later. Okay, but that's where my curve needs to happen. Your limits, again, are along your curves. All right, so now my, my second limit here that I'm given has to deal with x approaching 4, and these are one-sided limits. All right, so I just wrote which side they're coming from. 
before with the minus after it is coming from the left. So x values that might be just a little bit less than that one. And as x approaches 4 from the right would be values a little bit greater than 4. But again, these need to be along my curve. So this is where I'm going to continue drawing my curve to and from. So x approaching 4, so I kind of think about this in my mind at least as this vertical line that'll just help me line everything up here. So if I'm approaching 4 from the left, your x value is something like 3.9999999, right? Something just a little bit less than 4, so I'm approaching it from the left, and your y value is 3. So at 4, 3, I have another hole. Again, I don't want to overlap, and I'm going to make sure I connect this so it doesn't matter as long as it's a function. And then as 4 approaches, or as x approaches 4 from the right, my y value needs to be negative 3. So, all right, I'm going to go to 4, negative 3. Again, make sure it's a whole. And from the right, that's where I need to be approaching it. And again, from the right means you're coming in that direction, from the right. So even though your arrow tends to go off to the right, that's the direction you're going to, not the direction you were coming from. And then I might put an arrow on that end as well, and there's an example of what it could look like. What else could it look like? Well, you could have, um, you know, a quadratic out of here, a horizontal line, and then you could have a quadratic here, right? Anything that does not violate your vertical line test, you'd be fine. So the only two points that I have called out on this graph or of this function would be the point 1, 1 and the point 4, negative 1, which are not on my curve. So I hope that helps get you started with graphical limits. Um, we'll dive into a whole bunch of other graphs. Um, and there will be one more video as well on some of your algebraic limits that you're going to need to watch to complete the section. Thanks for watching.